I was glad when they said unto me, Come, let us go into the house of First Congregational, Bloomfield, <laughs> Connecticut, and have revival with the Connecticut Conference of the United Church of Christ. I bring you greetings from the Peach State of Georgia, the capital city of Atlanta, eastern suburb of Stone Mountain. The good people of the Victory for the World United Church of Christ. It's good to be in Connecticut, especially when the Falcons aren't playing the Giants or the Jets. We give God all the praise for God's amazing grace. I have to just praise God for Brother Kent Samadhi and to my sister Davida McCallister. Brother Steve Camp, to my good brother Matt Laney, and to all of you who comprise the household of faith, it's good to be here with you on tonight. The hour is already growing late, so let us not hold you too long. In the book of Acts, chapter 1, I want to invite your attention to verses 6, 7, and 8, Acts chapter 1. From the New Revised Standard Version, it reads like this. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And the disciples want to know, Lord, at this time, Will you restore the kingdom to Israel? Our topic tonight, in the meantime. Mm -hmm. Gotta say a word about this praise team. I'm sure if we looked up praise and worship in the dictionary, <laughs> we would find the pictures of these sisters right here. And these are amazing musicians. God, we honor you tonight. We ask that you will continue to move in this worship experience. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts to receive what the Spirit is saying to us tonight. We thank you because we know that you're already here, already moving, already blessing. Continue to do what you do best, and that is set your people free. We'll give you all the praise because there's none like you. In Jesus' name, amen. My brothers and sisters, everybody I know is waiting on something. Workers are waiting for payday. Students are waiting to graduate. Young people are waiting to get older. Older people are waiting to retire. Sick people are waiting for healing. Lonely people are waiting for relationships. Tired people are waiting for rest. Hurting people are waiting for help. Unemployed people are waiting for jobs. Distressed people are waiting for deliverance. And some of us are just waiting for church to be over. <laughs> we believe that God will answer prayer. We believe that God will work all things together for our good. We believe that one day we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. But while we are waiting for all that, the question is, what do we do in the meantime? How do we make it in the meantime between a prayer request and a prayer answer? How do we make it in the meantime between what we believe and what we expect to receive? How do we make it in the meantime between the weeping that endures for the night and the joy that is promised to come in the morning? We know that God will provide and that God will make a way out of no way, but the question tonight is what do we do in the meantime? According to Acts 1 and 3, Jesus appeared to his disciples 40 days after the resurrection. On this occasion, the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, at this time, will you restore the kingdom of Israel? The disciples were really asking, Lord, when? When will you bring back the glory, the independence, the sovereignty, and the prosperity that we as a nation once enjoyed under the golden reigns of King David and King Solomon? We've been under Roman oppression, We've been under Roman occupation for a long time. We've been praying for a Messiah, one sent from God to lead us out of the oppression into the promise of our national inheritance given to us through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God, we believe that you will make us a great nation. We believe that God will establish us 
as a great nation in truth and righteousness. We believe that God will deliver us from all of our enemies. We just want to know when. <laughs> Haven't we been praying and hoping and struggling and waiting long enough? Yes. We know God is a strong deliverer. We just want to know when. Yes. And everybody in here tonight waiting on God to move. Everybody in here tonight waiting on God to bless. Waiting on God to supply a need. Waiting on God to solve a problem has the same question that the disciples had. Lord, when? Yes. It seems like we could handle our tribulations a little better. Right. If we knew when, they would be over. It seems like we could bear our burdens a little better. If we knew that they would be over by Thanksgiving. It seems like you could handle cray cray in your life a little better. If you knew that cray cray was only going to be with you for two or three days. We might be able to handle the storms and adversities in life better if we only knew when. God would show up and make things all right. The disciples of Jesus wanted to know the same thing that we all want to know. Lord, when? When will you make good on your promise? When will you make things all right? When will you restore the kingdom or the kingdom of God? When will you answer prayer? When? Will our faith become sight? Yes. Lord, we know you can. We believe you will. Yes. Just tell us when. Yes. Jesus responds to all of us in Acts 1 and 7. He says, it is not for you to know the times or the periods that God has set by God's own authority. Amen. In other words, the question of when is God's business. Right. Not your business. Right. Jesus says, I'm not going to tell when everything is going to work out. But I will tell you how to make it until everything works out. You don't need to know when. That's God's business. But you do need to know how. In the meantime, while you're waiting on God to heal you, while you're waiting on God to open doors, while you're waiting on God to deliver you, while you're waiting on God to bless you, while you're waiting on God to answer your prayer and bring you out, here's what you need to know in the meantime. You shall receive power. Power to persevere and to press on despite your present problems. I know you want to know when your problems will be over. But I hear Jesus saying, I'm giving you power to do everything you need to do despite your problems. I'm giving you power to work with what you've got until you get what you want. Some people can't do anything unless they have everything they want when they want. Some people can't even get started unless everything is in place just the way they want. But God will give you power to make the best of what you got until you get what you want. God will give you power to work in the basement until you work your way to an upper level. God will give you power to live off minimum weight until you can receive your degree and demand a higher weight. develop it into a whole lot of something. Yes. Start with a book and build it into a library. Yes. Start with an idea and build it into yes. an institution. Yes. Start with a desire and follow it into your destiny. Yes. You're not going to always have everything you want the way you want it, when you want it. Some of us have got to handle what we got. if you want everything you want immediately. Gladys Knight said, I really got to use my imagination <laughs> to keep on keeping up. And then she said, I got to make the best of it. And the people say, yes,
been what we've got. Yes. Give us power yes. to turn our lemons into lemonade. Yes. Give us power yes. to turn mess into fertilizer. Woo. Give us power yes. to turn our opposition into opportunity. Yes. Power to turn scraps into quilts. Yes. Power to turn leftover into soul.
yes. but I'm giving you power to progress uh -huh. outside of your own perimeters. Yes. The disciples thought that the salvation and the liberation of God only pertained to Israel. Yes. They were only concerned with the political and the economic restoration of Israel. Yes. They thought that the mission of the Messiah only pertained to Israel. Yes. But Jesus said, why are you waiting? For the power of God to be manifested in Israel. Uh -huh. I'm giving you power to go beyond Israel. Right. You shall be my witnesses. You shall do my work. You shall spread my good news. Not only in Jerusalem, but in all Judea. Mm -hmm. And in Samaria. Mm -hmm. And even unto the uttermost parts of the world. Yeah. In other words, while you're waiting on God to bless you where you are. God will send you to other places to be a blessing to somebody else. Why are you waiting? On God to answer your prayer. God will use you to answer somebody else's prayer. Why are you waiting on God to bless your house? God will make you a blessing to the household of faith. Why are you waiting on God to meet the needs of your family? God will equip you to be a blessing to somebody else's family. If you serve others while you're waiting on God to bless you, yeah. you won't have so much time to throw so many pity parties for yourself. <laughs> if you give to others while you're waiting on God to give to you, God will help you to stop complaining about how much you don't have. Because you will recognize that there's somebody worse off than you. If you stop only saying, God bless me, and start learning how to pray, God Jesus' death on Good Friday mm -hmm. and 
Jesus' resurrection on Easter Sunday. Have you ever thought about all that God did in the meantime? I'm talking about between crucifixion Friday and resurrection Sunday. While we were waiting on God to get up from the grave. In the meantime, death lost its sting. In the meantime, victory was snatched from the grave. Just 
by grabbing in desperation. Let's just bow our heads and pray tonight because I know all of us have petitions on the altar. Sometimes it seems like those petitions have gone unanswered, but God says, I'm still moving. Even in the night when you think nothing's happening, God says, I'm still attending to your need. And in due season, I hear the Lord say, you shall reap a harvest of blessings. Yes, yes, yes. If you labor yes, yes. and faint not. Yes. Wait on the Lord, my sister. God's heard your prayers and God's got everything you need. Wait on the Lord, my brother. God knows what you need more than you even think you know what you need. Better to trust God. I'm pressing on the upward way. No heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward now. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. God, tonight, so many of us have gotten discouraged. So many of us have moved from faith to desperation. Because somehow it seems that it's taking too long. But God, not only do you know what's best, you know when to deliver. You know when we are ready. You know when we are prepared to receive what you have already prepared for us. As your people tonight. Prepare us for what you have prepared for us. Yeah. Touch our hearts and our minds. Touch our attitudes. Yeah. Strengthen our faith. Give us power to press on and persevere. Even if things don't work out by next Thursday. Yeah. Work in us. Yeah. Work the miracle in us. We may not have everything we want, but God, you have promised to supply all of our needs. So we thank you and we give you praise for right now. As a matter of fact, even before we ask you for anything else, we just want to say thank you. For the grace and the mercy you've already provided. Thank you for the doors you've already opened. If you don't open another door, you've already opened doors. And we give you praise. Before we ask you for anything else, we just thank you for our lives right now. And thank you for strength to be more than conquerors right now. And thank you for the victory, not when things happen, but right now. We believe it, we receive it. We give you praise and we give you honor. Thank you for being our prayer answerer. Thank you for being our sustainer. Even in the meantime, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank God. Ain't no need to worry. But the night's going to pray. It'll be all over. <laughs> in the morning. Okay. Okay. Ready? Okay.